Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium sports picks. Also, Dwyer Sports Betting channel on YouTube. For our podcast, if you don't want to see this lovely face, this 5 o'clock shadow, or uh, great-looking jerseys like this one, if you just want to hear my voice, DwyerBoxingNews.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, Peyton Manning crashed and burned. Hopefully you took our advice here online and faded Peyton Manning in the playoffs, right? Peyton Manning's in a very weird place in his career right now. He can see the field. He can read defenses. He knows where the ball should go. Unfortunately, Father Time has deprived him of some of his ability to get the ball there on time, right? Or to get the ball there accurately. Everything was laid out for him today, right? He was at home after a bye week, fully rested. He had his tight end back. His main receivers, Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, they were there. His running back, C.J. Anderson, was there. They were facing a Colt team that had been beaten up badly by the Dallas Cowboys just a few weeks ago. Right? It was not windy. The ball was not going to bat Peyton Manning's throws all over the yard. And still, in these conditions, which really can't get better for an elite quarterback, Peyton Manning's Denver Broncos only mustered 13 points. Now think about the line before the game. Think about the point spread and think about the fact that Manning and company only put up 13 points against the Indianapolis Colt defense, a defense that was on the road. And you understand why Peyton Manning and why his team, the Denver Broncos, have a very hard decision to make this offseason. Now let's change gears, right? This is just a first impression video I might make a follow-up video for premium subscribers later in the week, right? If I do, it'll be placed on the Dwyer Sports Betting channel here on YouTube. This coming weekend, right, the conference championship weekend, understand that according to weather reports, and if you're serious about gambling, you need to be serious about tracking the weather. Right? The chance of rain in Seattle for a game between Seattle and the Green Bay Packers will be about 50%. Winds are going to be between 5 and 10 miles per hour. Right? You're not going to have pristine conditions for the game between Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson. Right? The sun's not going to be out. It's not going to be sunny. It's not going to be, you know, uh, great. Instead, it's going to be overcast with rain showers. Right? Now, what I want you to do in terms of figuring out the lay of the land here is I want you to go back with me in time. We're going to go back to Monday. It was a Monday night football game. September 24th, 2012. Why? Because according to my research, that's the last time the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers went to Seattle and played the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. The quarterback for the Green Bay Packers that day was Aaron Rodgers. The quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks was a younger Russell Wilson. Now, I understand Seattle's a young team. I understand that much has changed in the world since this game took place, right? Seattle has won the Super Bowl. 
I imagine Russell Wilson is a much better quarterback today than he was then. Right? Guys like Eddie Lacy have made their mark on the league. Eddie Lacy was a key part of Green Bay's victory over the Dallas Cowboys. Right? So I understand a lot has changed. But here's what you need to consider and understand this game was played in better conditions than the game that's going to be played next weekend, right? This game was played in 67 degree temperature. The humidity was 49%, right? It had low wind. That's important, right? Because high wind could sway balls all over the place. Low wind, you would imagine, would favor passers. Here's what leaps out at me. And understand, as I make this video, the early line on the game is Seattle favored by seven and a half points over the Green Bay Packers. Right? Seven and a half. Right? At seven points plus what we gamblers call a hook. So it's not seven, it's 7.5. Understand that in this game, back in on September 24th, 2012, and the seven and a half point spread is for the game this coming weekend, right? Going back to the last time they played in Seattle, would it shock you to learn that Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay did not get a passing touchdown that entire game? In fact, Green Bay on Monday Night TV against Seattle in Seattle scored no points in the first half of that game. Would it shock you to learn that Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks only had 14 first downs the entire game? That Green Bay, with Aaron Rodgers, only had 22 first downs that game. Folks, Seattle won the game, but it was low scoring. Seattle won the game 14 to 12. Right? The only touchdown scored by Green Bay was a rushing touchdown by Cedric Benson. That's how long ago this game was, right? Cedric Benson. The final score was 14-12. Seattle. Right now, my point to you is that Aaron Rodgers these days is hobbled. Right? This Aaron Rodgers is not a healthy Aaron Rodgers. He's hobbling around the field now. Right? My point to you is that Seattle's defense is as good as ever. My point to you is that the conditions aren't going to be great for a lot of passing. Rodgers, by the way, is a phenomenal passer in rain, right? Rodgers, in my opinion, is the best quarterback in the National Football League today, right? Let me just point out to longtime uh, subscribers here online know I'm a Pro Pac-12 guy. I don't think it's an accident that two of the last four quarterbacks standing Rodgers, Berkeley man, Andrew Luck, Stanford man, are Pac-12 guys, right? I view Rodgers as the top rung, the top shelf. I believe he's going to win the MVP this year. Now, all of that said, as good as Green Bay looked against Dallas, and let's face it, wide receiver Devontae Adams is a revelation. Let's face it. Very few quarterbacks in the game could have their top receiver slowed down, right? Jordy Nelson slowed down by the Dallas Cowboys, and yet still have multiple receivers in the game with more than 100 receiving yards, right? While Rodgers is hobbled, he's still passing the football. But in my opinion, this is going to be a low-scoring game. In my opinion, and I don't know who wins the game, but in my opinion, the play here in a low-scoring game between two teams who, when they last met in Seattle, had a low-scoring game in better weather conditions. 
right? The play here is the underdog. Green Bay getting seven and a half points. The hook is important. You want more than just the simple seven points, right? Anytime you're getting a team like this, and let's be real here, Green Bay is not that great on the road, right? They were 8-0 regular season at home. What that means for a 12-4 team is they were 500 on the road. Right? Now they're 9-0 at home. They beat the Cowboys at home. They're still not that great on the road. In my opinion, not a lot of points are going to be scored here. Right? I think this is a low-scoring game. Anytime you have an opportunity to get a quality team, with a great quarterback at more than a touchdown in a game that you believe is going to be low scoring, I think that's the side to be on. To sum up, I like the Green Bay Packers here getting seven and a half points. If money comes in on the game, and if the line moves down to seven, I would still take the pack. Right? Because if the game is decided by a touchdown, then it's a push. You get your money back. And I feel your money is better used. Right? Getting seven points in a competitive game than laying points in a competitive game. Right? Keep in mind, just like Pete Wilson and... um not Pete Wilson, the uh, coach of the uh, Seahawks. Just like Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson have won a Super Bowl, so too have Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers. Right? So for me, as long as the line is seven or more, I like the Green Bay Packers getting those points. Right? I don't know who wins the game. I agree. Seattle is great at home. I agree, Green Bay has been 500 on the road, but I just feel that these two teams know each other. I think that September 24th, 2012 game that ended with Seattle 14, Green Bay 12, right? I believe this is the Fail Mary game. I believe this game has significance. Think about it, too. Without the Fail Mary Right, the controversial play at the end of the game involving replacement refs. Seattle would have only put up seven points that day. Understand, Mike McCarthy knows how to slow down a mobile Russell Wilson. Right, Mike McCarthy knows how to slow down Seattle's offense. He's done it in the past. So I'm expecting a low-scoring game here, and in a low-scoring game, I'm going to take the dog. The Green Bay Packers getting the 7.5 points. Let me be clear, too. That's what the line is today, January 11, 2015, at about 7 p.m. Pacific time. Right? You want to gauge this video against the actual line that you get when you bet on this game later in the week if that's when you see this video, okay? I like Green Bay getting seven and a half because of the prior meeting between these two teams that took place on Monday, September 24th, 2012. And also because I believe you're dealing with Aaron Rodgers, the best in the game, who even with a limp, is able to have multiple receivers over 100 yards, even with Jordy Nelson, slowed down by the Dallas Cowboys. I like Green Bay getting 7.5. Let me hear from you. Let's make this a forum for gamblers. You have the comment section to this video. If there's information you feel is relevant that can help gamblers, other gamblers, gamblers like us, and their decision on how to play this game. I hope you leave it here in the comment section to this video.
Okay, and again, I also hope you check DwyerVIP.com. That's my premium site for sports picks from time to time. And if you want monthly subscriptions, I hope you take a look at my Dwyer Sports Betting channel here on YouTube. Good luck. I hope you cash all your tickets. Thanks for stopping by. If there are any prop bets that spring up during the week that I think are worthwhile, then I might post some of them on my DwyerSportsBetting.com website. Thanks for stopping by.